And this morning, we're looking at the overall impact of that biggest tax code overhaul since the Reagan administration. Joining us right now is the Labor Secretary, Alex Acosta. Secretary Acosta, it's good to see you this morning. Good Thank you so much for joining us. So what has the new law, the tax law, meant for jobs? Well, we've had one million new jobs alone since the tax cut, 3.4 million since President Trump was elected. And it's not just the new jobs, it's wages are going up. You know, everyone is winning with these tax cuts. One of the issues that we've talked about also in the commercial break a moment ago is the fact that now there are more job openings than there are actually people to fill those jobs. There, there are. It's incredible. Since we've been keeping data on this, we've never had an economy where we have more open jobs than we have job seekers. So what do you do about it? 6.7 million open jobs. And so we're focusing on workforce education. You know, the president's looking to extend Pell Grants financial aid to certificate programs to help individuals get skills to fill these open jobs. Yesterday in Wisconsin, an amazing, amazing opening. Foxconn is investing $10 billion and they need workers and it's great. Okay, so are we gonna see labor force participation coming up? In other words, more people joining the workforce, whether it's, maybe it's people with a criminal background that are now getting a second chance, maybe it's someone who is discouraged. We haven't seen them flooding back into the labor market yet. Are you seeing that? Do you expect it? Well, we are seeing it, and we're seeing it. If, you, if one looks at the prime age worker, the, mm -hmm. the 25 to, to 55 to, to 60, year old worker. Uh, labor force participation is going up and it's going up and individuals are coming that maybe had a record where employee, employers before wouldn't take a risk and now they're saying let's take a risk and it turns out they're great workers. Yeah, now is it, uh, is it a nonviolent offender that's the key or what do you, as you advise companies on, you know, where do we find the workers now? Well, you know, you, you've, you've got individuals that are nonviolent offenders. You have individuals that maybe were at home that had given up that are now joining the, the workforce. More and more people are starting to work because you've got not just good jobs, but you've got careers, you've got career paths. More uh, guest workers, is that going to be a possibility in terms of uh, immigration, more people uh, coming in to fill some of these uh, service, retail, uh, restaurant jobs? Well, certainly we have a number of visas that we allocate, but we've got Americans right now that are not in the labor force that can come into the labor force. And so let's focus on bringing those Americans into the labor force first. We have to talk about the huge decision out of the Supreme Court against unions yesterday. Tell us how you see it. So the, the Janus decision, and what that means is that individuals have a First Amendment right to choose not to speak through a union. Uh, they have a right to, to not pay a union dues and, and have those dues used to force speech on them. And, and so that's, that's really a, a shift in policy. It's a constitutional decision. And it says that the government workers cannot be forced to speak by giving unions money where those unions then use that money to advocate for things that they may not agree with. Let me bring in uh, counsel to the president, Kellyanne Conway, to the conversation. Kellyanne, it's good to see you. Hi, Maria. Thank you so much for joining us. We're talking about this decision from the Supreme Court uh, where now unions uh, are really a, a blow to unions where people will not have to be ta seeing money come out of their paycheck to be put toward political campaigns. Uh, th this is the first business president. Has the president uh, talked to you about this? He has uh, before the decision and after and since the decision. And you may look at it as the blow to unions, but it's real buoyancy for freedom. And when I look at the six-month anniversary of the President's Tax Cut and Jobs Act, and I look at the Janus decision in the Supreme Court, I see freedom. I see individual choice. People being able to make their own decisions according to their own will and their own conscience. You talk about the metrics surrounding the tax cut, but it's the buoyancy. It's the, it's the confidence that people are spending their money. They can make plans. If there are more jobs available than job seekers it gives you freedom you're not stuck in your job you're not stuck according to the benefits that are being offered or the type of work as the secretary and the president have made a priority of workforce development and and skills education it tells this country that we dignify all types of careers. And I think that's incredibly important at a time when people are facing mounting college debts and student loans and wondering, should I take that path or should I get a skill certificate, a community college or high school degree, and support myself and my family the very next day? Where I grew up, people graduated from high school, they had gone to vocational technical school by and large, they were hairdressers, mechanics, welders, carpenters the very next day, and still are, have family businesses. I think this president respects 
respects all types of careers and respects the right of union workers to exercise their own free conscience and their own free will to decide what to do with those union dues. I'll tell you, people in this, in this town have been working on paycheck protection and all across this country for decades. This whole idea that you shouldn't be able to misuse union dues, you cannot overestimate the, the buoyancy for freedom that comes out of that Janus decision. Were you expecting that, Alex? Um, and so that was certainly our position before the Supreme Court. Yeah, because it doesn't make a lot of sense that you would be forced to pay some of your paycheck and then you know that it's probably going toward a political campaign, supporting someone who you may not want to support. Or, or at least a policy in the, in the Janus case that you didn't back on, at the, with the government where you're a government employee. It also tracks with the president's um, themes of transparency and accountability that you see all throughout, and fairness, that you see all throughout his campaign and now his presidency, Maria and James, because he, he believes in fairness, um, equality of opportunity, not equality of outcomes. There's a big difference. And in this case, you shouldn't be compelled, but also people object to bringing politics into the workplace. They object to, right. to bringing politics into um, government funding. It's why a lot of people don't like the fact that some of these organizations like Planned Parenthood could get a half a billion dollars a year in taxpayer funding because they believe that you should keep the politics out of it. Let me ask you about the, the president's position on this story this morning from Axios uh, that the president would like to withdraw from the World Trade Organization. What is the president saying? I know he's called it a disaster in the past, uh, but is this, does he officially want out? Well, the president has made very clear that he thinks people who are, are members of a group like NATO should pay their fair share, and many more people are paying more because of his leadership in that regard. He certainly shows up at the G7 and, and is, a, is a, a willing participant, but at the same time expresses what America First means under President Donald Trump. I think the World Trade Organization is another group that he has said we should take a look at. So I'll leave any announcements to him. You're interviewing him uh, this afternoon, Maria, so I'll leave you to answer the, to ask him that question. I think the president's made very clear that America first also doesn't mean America alone, but also means that we stop paying the bill for lots of other people and participating in things that may not be in our best interest. And, and real quick before we go, Alex, you have a plan to train people for some of these new industries like AI robotics and blockchain, some of the things that you're looking for as far as growth stories for the U.S. economy, right? A absolutely. And Congress has provided funding to start apprenticeships and workforce education because we have 6.7 million open jobs. Right. We'll leave it there. Kellyanne Conway, Secretary Alex Acosta, great to see you both. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us.